there is nothing that will boil up the arrogance of your school or your conference like conference realignment. <laughs> What is going on, everybody? It is Jake with Master Football. Back at it again. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for being here. For those of you who've never been here before, this is Jake with Master Football. Things pro football, college football, video game football, anything related to American football, we discuss on this show. Please, 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 emphasis on the please. Please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Please share it. Please comment on it. Anything like that, I really appreciate it. I need some comments today, so get down in there and get after it because I need your help. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so it's not literally crap, but uh, there's a different word. But again, hey, I'm trying to get monetized right here. So uh, crap runs downhill. Recap for those of you who haven't been here before who, or who don't know what we're talking about, okay? For the longest time, Texas and Oklahoma were secretly talking about joining the SEC, leaving the Big 12. So they go ahead and do that. It does not get revealed until SEC media days, more than likely because another Texas school, Texas A&M, was upset that they were no longer the only SEC option in Texas. So they leak it to the press. It gets out. Everybody goes crazy about that. There was a whole bunch of situations involving the fact that, like, there was a whole bunch of drama, like, you know, the SEC was doing this while talking about expanding the playoff, and they were kind of, a lot of people didn't really know this, so they might have been, like, trying to secretly sneak in a couple more extra bids for the SEC. Who knows? Okay, the SEC more than likely could do that, but they were doing this all the at the same time. I believe that the the uh, uh, resistance to the playoff expansion has actually been kind of halted now because now the Pac-12 can get a representative in, the Big 12 can get a representative in. If the ACC has a down year with Clemson, they can get a representative in. So certain conferences are no longer shut out, especially those autonomous five conferences. So again, that's how it happens: is with the uh, the the playoff will more, more than likely expand in the future, but we're not there yet. Where we are at, where the crap is rolling downhill, is it went from uh, the SEC, and then it went to Bob Bowlesby with the Big 12. Bob Bowlesby decided to add four schools, Cincinnati, Houston, and Central Florida from the American, and then they added BYU from the independent ranks. Those four schools to replace the two schools, they're going to be at 12. So where does that leave next? Who is next on that crap rolling? And so to say, where we go from here? The next person is Mike Oresco, the leader of the American Athletic Conference. So for Mike, Mike's in a weird situation because he has already tried. He has been reaching out to several schools to try to expand. So he reached out to Boise State. He reached out to uh, Colorado State. And he reached out to Air Force. Now, again, he might not have explicitly reached out, but he kind of was like, hint, hint, wink, wink. You guys should try to come. All three of those schools decided to stay. There was another school that was rumored they were going to bring in, University of Alabama, Birmingham. So after UAB, there was also, again, crap runs downhill. So somebody's trying to stop the crap. They're literally trying to stop the crap right now. Conference USA has actually reached out about something that would be crazy. So just a couple days ago from Chris Vanini of The Athletic, Conference USA sends a letter to AAC about partnership, but AAC has no interest. So it says right here, uh, American Athletic Conference is requesting a dialogue on conference realignment and regionalization. The idea would be discuss potential re reorganization between the two leagues, such as creating one conference in the East and one in the West. Various models have been discussed in the Conference USA, but not one singular plan in place. The AAC league source said the conference has no interest in such a move, but Conference USA is hoping simply to create more discussion among presidents. The source also indicates that the AAC commissioner, Mike Oresco, is still focused on creating the top group of five league and pushing for power six status. It says right here that UAB is believed to have the most support among the AAC stakeholders regarding potential additions, but a consensus on other schools hasn't been reached, and a new timeline for future AAC expansion is not clear. The AAC and Conference USA both stretch from eastern seaboard to Texas, with overlapping members in many states. At the conference level, the Sun Belt has no interest in such a move either, something many fans of the two leagues have desired. Both the AAC and Sun Belt believe that they are better positioned than Conference USA and don't want to give up that advantage. Some athletic directors in those leagues see the appeal of such a move, but believe factors such as conference exit fees, current television deals, and local political clashing make such a move untenable. 
So there you go. Conference USA is looking at the entire landscape and they're like, hold on, we know that's going to happen. Okay, are we just going to do pluck by pluck by pluck by pluck? They're like, let's just see if we can discuss a merger. Let's just all combine together and form some sort of super league. What if Conference USA, American, and uh, the Sun Belt all form together to have their own regional districts? They could do a cool thing where they could maybe have like, you know, a semifinals of the conference championship between the top four teams. It would be something crazy like that. I think the issue here, and I don't want to, I don't want to point out too aggressively this comment, but I think that Mike Oresco, he thinks that he's above that. And again, we're seeing this in conference. I'm telling you right now, I made a couple conference realignment videos. There is nothing that will boil up the arrogance of your school or your conference like conference realignment. Everybody else discusses people's enrollment rates. They discuss people's you know television deals. They discuss people's television contracts. They discuss the size of the school. They discuss the ability of the team to play. They discuss all of that kind of stuff. Everything's, up. oh yeah, well, our school has access to this airport. Our school has access to this. And it's like, okay, there was that recent report, again, that video I put on there uh, from uh, Sikkim 365 that actually broke down what the schools are going to be looking for, how they actually integrate with each other going forward. So a lot of that conversation, I kind of leave that. That's just fandom uh, parading as, you know, conference uh, commissioners and things like that. But where do we go from here? Because if I believe the situation was if that AAC Conference USA Sunbelt merger is not going to happen, the AAC wants to position themselves as a Power Six conference. And again, I think they keep on saying that despite the fact that Boise State, Colorado State, and Air Force all said no to conference merger. So where do they go from here? So here we are on the daily campus from SMU. Uh, AAC Commissioner Mike Oresco responds to Conference USA letter, realignment, and murky future for the conference. Oresco said the AAC intends to add member schools to continue positioning itself as a Power 6 conference instead of any merger. A merger, according to many experts, would weaken the AAC's standing considerably. Before the departure of the three teams, the American was seen as the top non-Power 5 conference. However, Oresco is betting that the AAC will add substantial teams to the fold to continue to be the top group of five conference. At this point, that may not be possible. It indicates here that Boise State, San Diego State, Colorado State, and Air Force all decided that against coming to the American and elected to stay in the Mount West Conference. After that, the Mount West called itself the top non-Power 5 conference, surpassing the American. It also adds here that the University of Alabama Birmingham has been discussed as a potential target. And again, I think right now all signs point to UAB. If you're a UAB fan, it's only a matter of time. UAB has gone from not having a football program in 2014 to potentially uh, joining the American Athletic Conference, one of the top group of five conferences. And again, maybe not the top, but a solid group of five conference coming up from the death, um, their self-imposed death penalty before. I wouldn't say that our position is a defensive at all, Oresco said. I think, you know, you've obviously got some schools that are leaving. They have the reasons for leaving. We had an outstanding relationship with those schools. We wish them well. Oresco instead of pointed to a new model instead of bringing in established schools. He believes that the conference can survive by bringing in lesser schools and raising their profile once they are in the conference. I think what is sometimes overlooked is what the American Athletic Conference has done in elevating programs that may have, may have not been at the level they're at now. In terms of the conference, our goals and vision have not changed. I think once we reconstitute, we're going to continue our approach as in trying to become an autonomous six conference. So right now, early reports are the fact that there are three schools that are rumored to be kind of higher up on that echelon. One is the top. Obviously, UAB is at the top. It's one of those three schools. There's two other ones. And then there's about seven or eight schools that I want to kind of talk through to kind of see what you guys think would be a good idea to add to the American Athletic Conference. Let's get it going. So right here, Matt Brown, EP, he has himself a extra points, which is its own podcast. He, I was not able to actually log into the podcast. I was trying and trying and trying. They wanted me to pay for it, so I just let it go by the wayside. But it basically says that UAB and UNC Charlotte are the top two candidates for AAC expansion, per Matt Brown. And again, we'll see if this Let's Go Niners guy is actually telling the truth. Down here, it also says there will likely be a Texas edition as well. Most likely that Texas edition is going to be UT San Antonio. UT San Antonio was coming up. They're actually doing a pretty good job in terms of developing themselves. Remember, San Antonio, there's no pro football team out there. They have the Alamo Dome. They've got a couple of things that you can kind of work with. It's in pretty good recruiting territory. So I think that that's kind of where they're going. Again, it might be Rice or somebody like that, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But what I want to do is discuss, I have here, I have eight teams that I think actually would be a reasonable addition. And I kind of want to know what people from the AAC wouldn't mind and what everybody else thinks about that. So those teams are, so we have a couple of them, two independents. 
We have Liberty. Liberty is surprisingly, it's in Lynchburg, Virginia, kind of a small region, only about 80,000 people. Their enrollment, and again, this was a big factor for UCF and a big factor for a couple other schools. Their enrollment was 110,000 students. A lot of alumni, a lot of people down the road, they're going to be like, oh, dude, we got to watch the Liberty game. And they might be all across the country. I know that Liberty, I think a high percentage of those are uh, online students, but still at the same time, I know I got an online degree from my master's program and I still check up on my school. The next one would be Army. Navy is already in as a football only member, but again, if you could add Army to that, I think adding the Army Navy game, being in the AAC conference game, that would be awesome. The Army has a national audience, they have an international audience. People who are in the Army who didn't even go to Army watch Army. I think that would be a good addition for them. Next one would be Appalachian State. Appalachian State is a little bit weird. High success on the football program, and then, you know, kind of a small region. They're not necessarily going to add anything from a, you know, from a region perspective or from a TV market perspective, but what they are going to do is they are a solid football team that you can add that is going to win games. I do believe that the AAC, that's probably what he means by one of those teams you could take a chance on, but again, we'll see what he says in, down the future. Again, it's small market um, in, the, in the middle of the Appalachian Trail. Who knows? Uh, the next one will be Rice. So Rice is weird because Rice has unbelievable academics, okay? Just off-the-chain academics, okay? Really, really prestigious tool. Ridiculously prestigious. It's in the city of Houston. However, the problem is, is they're not very good at sports, and nobody in Houston cares about Rice. Sorry, not sorry. I don't want to be offensive, but that's the biggest thing holding them back was the fact that they have all the things in place to be a successful football program, but they're just not. I mean, Houston's a dynamite recruiting ground, and they still can't get people to go there. Then the next ones we have here, we have FAU and FIU. FAU and FIU are in South Florida, and then we'll actually go to the map here to kind of see that. Both Conference USA teams, uh, they are have huge enrollments. I want to say FIU has something like 50,000 plus students, something like that. So big en enrollments in South Florida, close to the University of South Florida. I wouldn't think that actually wouldn't be a bad addition for those two teams. The last one would be Coastal Carolina and Georgia State, both Sunbelt teams. Coastal Carolina is kind of a developmental team. Okay, they've been coming up a little bit. Again, they, they came up from you know FCS recently, but they've been doing a really good job. And then also Georgia State. Georgia State in Atlanta, they actually play where the Braves used to play. They reconstituted that stadium as a football stadium. It's actually really cool when you see the renderings of it. Georgia State, uh, Georgia, college football environment, college football town. I actually think that wouldn't be a bad environment. I, however, I'm not going to lie. I don't know if Georgia State moves the needle in Atlanta, I mean, Atlanta seems like a pro sports town. And if anything, you know, it's going to be uh, University of Georgia or something like that. This is actually a really cool map. So up here, I have a couple of things right now. I, the uh, white dots are Conference USA and the uh, blue dots are the AAC. So this one is incorrect. Actually, this is UConn and they are actually no longer in the AAC. But if you can think about this, Cincinnati, they are going to be leaving. You're going to have, there's a little dot here behind this dot that's going to be Houston. They're going to be leaving. And then we have UCF right here, and they are going to be leaving. So where does that put us? Again, the teams that I mentioned, uh, Lynchburg, Virginia is right around here. So that's where the Liberty Flames are. Then you have Army that's going to be up here. You have Appalachian State, which is in North Carolina along the Appalachian Trail. You have uh, UNC Charlotte, which is right here. You have FAU and FIU down here, these two. You have Coastal Carolina, which is actually going to be down here in this region. They're a Sunbelt team. You can't see them, but they're over here in, in Myrtle Beach. And then the last one would be Georgia State in Atlanta. So you think about cohesion amongst the blue dots. That's what you're trying to do from the AAC. That's what Mike Oresco is trying to do. You see how the Conference USA kind of spread themselves out. They added UTEP. They added Old Dominion. They added schools that really kind of extend the uh, the geographic profile of the teams, making it much more difficult to schedule. You know, again, remember here, especially when you get to the smaller schools, it's harder and harder to schedule those, you know, Tuesday night volleyball games, those Wednesday night basketball games. That right there, these two additions make it very, very hard for them to coordinate between these other schools. So if you're the blue dots, I think that that's where you're kind of looking. Remember, Army's going to be up here. And then we have, uh, you know, Liberty right here, UNC Charlotte here. Uh, Coastal Carolina here, Georgia State here, FAU, FIU, and then we have UAB. Everybody's favorite UAB is right there to be added in, and then possibly even UT San Antonio. So there it is right now. Okay, so if the, the, the ball is in Mike Oresco's court. It's his decision to do it. He has to move it forward. So the next action we're going to see is more than likely that way. I suspect that the Big 12 is going to wait a little bit here, but uh, I think Mike Oresco can't wait because if he waits – then who knows, there might be, you know, Sunbelt and Conference USA might get together and, and work out their differences. You never know.
All right, everybody, get in those comments. Let me know what you think. What do you think is going to happen next in conference realignment, especially amongst those Conference USA, AAC, and Sunbelt teams? But I will see you guys on Monday. I am exhausted. I am out.